purpose of Flying for Heroes is to help wounded, injured and sick servicemen and women realize that their boundaries aren't what they appear to be. Five giraffes just galloped in front of me as I was coming down the runway, warming the engine up. This is just epic. You can't get better than this. I mean, here we are in Kenya, and we just about to fly off to another location after having an epic night here, sleeping with three of the big five. I mean, <laughs> brilliant, isn't it? Hey, amazing. A bit of extra weight. Always not light, even though he's missing a leg. <laughs> <laughs> it was a shape-charged roadside bomb. It penetrated a vehicle that had never been penetrated before. When it detonated, it came up and in essence went through my leg and through the body armor of the guy sitting in front of me, through him and then sort of lodged into the inside of the wall of the armoured vehicle we were in. I instantly lost my leg. It was initially a through knee. I have 13 centimetres of residual limb. That's that much. It's that high up because I picked up a really nasty bug which got into the marrow of the leftover femur and was tracking up towards the hip. And so in surgery they had to chop, chop, chop about seven times over a period of two weeks. They've got to where they are, if you can see them in the distance, and they've just, they've got a small front um, coming in which has got rain. Now obviously they can't fly with the rain, um, so at the moment they're making a decision, which will be either Alex or Neil will make the decision, and then they're going to start maybe coming back here. So all we'll do is try and get the paramotors up so they get a bit of a flight here. The route he's taking, the rain is depleting, so he's happy to push on. The other two will basically follow his lead. The two-stroke engine, if it's not up, if it's not up to temperature, when you come to take off, you're going to have a bit of a delay. It's the, the engine's got to sort of heat up and expand so everything fits properly. Um, once it's warmed up, it's fine. You can get away, no problem. Well, I say that. Give us two minutes, and you'll see. What, <laughs> just let's see what happens. <laughs> Um, you got no return? No. Yeah. No. No power. That's two days without Kessia, so fuck. That's flying for you. <laughs> you go with the road party, you take these, Kes going at the other end, he's got a whole day doing nothing. And then he has a he has some time on these and looks at them. Otherwise you're gonna lose another day's flying tomorrow because he's gonna be flying back. Yeah. That's what I would suggest you do. The great thing about Gans, if you think you're having a bad time, you know Gans is having a worse time. So he kind of sucks up everyone else's pain. No matter what's going on, you can see the, the, the funny side of something. Uh, and that is such a unique gift to have. <laughs> this is meal bonding. Oh, have I broke it? I think it's just going off. <laughs> I, d I don't know. I think it's it's in my nature not to be down. I mean, when things do go wrong, it's it's look look where we are, look around you. It's fair enough. You can have some you can have some big problems out here, but the, the where we are just it makes up for it. I think because a lot of the times when you see people down, it doesn't take much to pick them back up. I mean, around the campfire, it's it's you, you get you get to have times that you can't have back home, really. But um, in terms of me picking people up, a lot of the jokes were, that's the only reason I was invited. <laughs> a man can survive for 24 hours with a box of tuskers. Okay, we've set up camp. Camp set up. <laughs> we're done.
Well, we scrounged some, some uh, food from our guests. I have to admit, it's fantastic. It's seriously tasty. So yeah, we're being spoiled. We had a couple of beers. That's probably why we've got up the munchies. First cross country since being in country, so it's going to be yeah, epic, beautiful conditions this morning. So it's going to be awesome. We've got Killy down to our sort of south at the moment, so really hoping it clears off a bit so we can get eyes on that. It'll be very cool. I've got to say that first flight's pretty, pretty awesome. You know, you're so exposed in the aircraft, there's nothing keeping you in at all. There's nothing containing you. 2012, uh, early 2012, I deployed to Afghanistan. Loved the job. Absolutely loved it. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Uh, change it. I don't regret doing it at all. Mm. On the 2nd of May uh, 2012 we uh, had a sort of raid on a, on a Taliban uh, improvised explosive device factory where they manufacture their homemade explosive and the pressure plates and you know the triggers and things that they use to initiate these devices. As soon as we detonated the explosive uh, the, the, the comm scanner went crazy. We could hear the Taliban saying that they were going to hit us hard and we took a sort of detour. We pushed down the irrigation ditch off with great cover the two guys stepped out, moved along and ploughed field next to us. They managed to get out and move along, find no problem. I stepped out and I was, you know, slightly bigger, heavier, carrying more weight. And uh, I triggered it. I stepped on a, a pressure plate uh, explosive device, mm. uh, immediately amputating both of my legs, blew my left hand to bits. My rifle hit me in the face, my body armor hit me under the chin. Uh, I broke my neck in three places, I burst my lungs, uh, you know, everything was just completely shattered. And I was in a coma then for 48 days before I eventually woke up. And yeah, you know, you wake up to this whole other world all of a sudden and it's just like, wow, what the hell am I going to do now? You know, what, what do I do? You know, mm. I, can't, I can't do all the things I used to love. I you know, was massively keen on my outdoor sort of pursuits and I was very keen on you know, adventure sports and things like that. Suddenly it was all taken away from me through guys like Alex turning up and, you know, James Carl. Uh, another chap on the trip, you know, he, he came along and said, don't worry mate, we'll get you back on the water, we'll get you sailing and we'll get you doing stuff like that. And it made a massive difference. It just meant that there was this life after injury kind of thing and mm. that was a huge turning point for my morale, lying in hospital, can't move, you know, nurses 24-7, just endless work on you. To then thinking, right, I'm going to do my best to get out of this bloody bed and go and, you know, get stuck in again. I'm not going to quit at this point. So it's been a, a great uh, 24 hours here. But it's now time to uh, get back to work uh, and head on up the Rift Valley. Everything is absolutely covered in dust. It's almost unreal. It's absolutely stunning. Could drop them down between the trees, foot dragging in between the guys working the crops and everything. I mean, in England, you, you fly over people's land, they get the police involved, set the dogs off. These are like waving you down the land for cups of tea and everything. <laughs> Swore allegiance to a flag. <laughs> it's a very important flag to me now, as I'm now British. I've cast away my Afghanisms and taken up the Union flag as my own. Unfortunately, our superior and great leader today flew said flag upside, upside. down. <laughs> Therefore, tomorrow we shall see our illustrious leader fly in the morph suit. <laughs> So that was a lovely flight in a pink suit. We're coming to stay on your lake for a few days. I hope you don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One more. You're going to do it with me? 
Uh, the biggest problem at the moment we've got is uh, very low cloud and we're at 6,500 feet. We've got to rise to 8,500 and at the moment we're committing to a takeoff uh, and we definitely haven't got that clearance. So uh, there's a bit of jeopardy in this flight so far and we, um, we need to start thinking about contingency plans. Yeah, and some high terrain to get over. So this is going to be probably, probably one of the more interesting flights in terms of challenges. We got Kester coming in behind us, he's about 10k out. And the advanced party are way behind, <laughs> they'll be towing one trike. Or did it get stuck in? Which part? Hold on, no, so we've so driven so straight through these ones, yeah. It's all, we saw it bounce straight out. He's probably only two or three k from you, and they have grounded out and they're stuck in a riverbed. Hello? Ooh. Yeah, yeah. yeah, if it's Kale, not so well. We are in a fucking hole, mate. <laughs> yeah. So now we're sat on a tractor. Doesn't look happy for it. Happy, does it? Well, Neil's going to phone me at 6.30 and I will be stood on the runway and I'll give you a, we uh, a weather forecast and I'll also let you know exactly where it is to the point where I'm happy to stand at where your threshold would be for you to touch down there and give you a clear run for landing. At the moment, if you look across there, we've got this front coming in. That front is moving faster then they will be able to get to us, which means that probably by the time they land on, they're going to be in rain, which is obviously no fly straight away. The runway is, is wet, it's very wet, sinking down. You can see where the animals have come across during the night. They've been sinking in. To be honest, I will call this a no landing now. They've been rained on all night and the people <laughs> can't fly in a normal aircraft and they can't fly out. Um, there is no, there are no facilities. All the tents have been flooded, and um, they can't really move very easily at all. We are now going to continue the adventure by jumping in this plane with Andrew, who's taking us down to join the, the main body to pick up the spare parts for the, the second trike, which was damaged yesterday during, during towing. Fingers crossed that we'll have the spare parts, otherwise Kez here is going to lose an eyebrow. <laughs> It all went off yesterday. We had um, one Land Rover stuck in the mud, one Land Rover lost, one Land Rover towing a trike, which fell into a pothole and destroyed the trike. And we had uh, you guys on the, on the move with a broken truck. We had the sponsors at another location. It was all going off. Uh, Kester's done his magic. Um, we're fingers crossed we're uh, going to get this baby flying again. I honestly didn't think he would be able to fix it. I, I looked at the trike when it when it went when it crashed in, and uh, well, the wheel lost the wheel, and uh, I thought that was out. He's fixed it. So Ed, more of the stories. Never, I'm not promising this one. No, uh, never doubt that. Don't press that hard. You take my bloody skin off. Well, the, this this, <laughs> this razor. razor's not actually Ooh. very sharp. When you're in that in, up in the air, whatever thousands of feet, hundreds of feet up you are, you're in the air. You're flying this thing, um, and it's. Takes everything away, eh? Best way to describe it is takes everything away. 
you're, you're there, you've got your comms on, you can see other trikes in the air. This is what we're here for. It's epic. It's completely life-changing, really. You don't get this opportunity. I, I don't think it ever could be replicated again. There's a lot of people here that have learned a hell of a lot about other people uh, working in this kind of team. But in a location that is just everywhere we've gone, it's just completely exceeded expectations. You know, we started down in the south, it was very dry, moved into the rift and it was just lush, verdant green, you know, beautiful. Look, some places were like a little Switzerland kind of thing on the tops of some of the mountains. It was just stunning. And then up here on the Lycopia Plains, you know, it's again just blown us away again. You know, guys are seeing rhino and elephant and giraffe and things like that. A backdrop like Mount Kenya, you know, right there all the time, you know, hills just everywhere. Crazy people, everybody's really friendly, you know, the locals all get involved and they get stuck in, you know. And it's just, it's just been a really humbling experience to have the kind of support that we've had the whole way through. The people here are so generous. And it's just been an epic adventure, really. You know, I just loved it. One of the great um, uh, results of these kind of expeditions and trips and things is that we really want to motivate guys to get stuck in. You know, I want to be able to say, listen, buddy, I've, uh, I've got, you know, I've got issues too. And look what we're doing. You know, this is what we're achieving. There's guys with problems like you doing this stuff, we're out there and we're living, you don't need to sort of make yourself this recluse, you don't need to hold away from everybody, there's a life to live, you know, a lot of these guys are young guys, I mean really, really young guys, and they've, they've got a whole life ahead of them, you know, you can't just sit there and be, you know, left in the dark, you need to get stuck in and it'll, it'll benefit them immensely. People want to help and mm -hmm. it's, you know, that's immensely inspirational to us, you know, as, as wounded guys, uh, having that kind of support and that kind of... Um, background, you know, they, they just they just understand so much better and they, they really, you know, they care. People do care. Rock! 